Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to my channel and you as you must have seen in the description today's topic is on software audits in the wake of COVID-19. Now you must be thinking that how on earth are these two terms like even related and how about this that if I say that this pandemic right now may become a, or is going to become a direct consequence of of a tsunami of software audits by the major software vendors or even small for that matter. So let's get started. What is software audit? Now software audit is nothing but a term which emanates as a right by the software provider which is enshrined in EULA. Now what is EULA? EULA is a contract which governs the way the software has to be used by the consumer. It is end user license agreement. Okay, so come to the, pre the present day situation. Now, now the cities are being logged. There are national lag lockdowns all over the world. So the companies behaving as good Samaritans and to ensure the continuity of their business operations are actually shifting their manpower from the offices to their homes. And, and Masse, Okay, fair enough. Sounds good. So what's the problem? Okay, the problem here, the problem is that the moment you, so the problem is that, that once we are shifting the licenses, the software licenses resident on any particular machine fr from one machine to another, or even bizarre enough in certain EULA, even the physical location is locked. So uh, a, a, a computer, a, a, a machine listed as, uh, as an address of block A, block if it's shifted to block B, like 100 yards away, where there is a change of postal code, you have to pay a certain amount of asset transfer fee to the software vendor. And so is the case if you are changing the terminal. So what happened that so many companies they have shifted like en masse thousands and thousands of their manpower from their offices to working from home remotely so many of them have been given um, a laptop a brand new laptop now hello the moment you're shifting from a desktop to laptop and that too for thousands and thousands of employees you have to pay like as most of the EULA says, since the uh, since the software is being transferred from this machine to another, so you have to pay certain charges. Okay, so how would this happen? Uh, uh, the software audit. Now, software audit generally happens in as as a consequence of overt or covert uh, uh, actions. Now, covert actions are something else which are not a part of this video because covid 19 is such a global phenomena it is such a covert action that you do not have to be a sherlock holmes to find it out you have to just google it that how many companies have shifted their uh, manpower to work from home there you have you have such a low hanging fruit for the software vendors for the major software vendors and this my fear is that this may trigger a slew of software audits. Now, how the software audit looks like? What are the mechanics of that? In a, in a classic case of software audit, you get a letter from the, from the software vendor, OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer for that. So you get a letter from them or from the association, uh, two big associations, or from their attorney that, dear, Dear customer, you are in the violation uh, of uh, of the software uh, which we have supplied to you. And generally that letter, the tone and tenor of that particular notice is extremely intimidating. Extremely intimidating in the terms of the smallest penalty which is imposed upon is in the tune of <coughs> is in the tune of $200,000 or $500,000, it goes to millions and millions and millions. And this really, 
the whole objective of that letter is to chicken out and and that is a whole together a different subject to deal with that it is actually a forceful technique of renewal or or foregoing of discounts and things like that that's a different world out there but the thing is that the moment a person uh, an entity gets such a letter then starts the game of fixing the culpability that okay no 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 it was by mistake or no it, we have not done but here in this situation as i said it is so overtly open that the speed of establishment of culpability of that that you are at fault is so very easy and in this situation since this has recent it's a recent development the the best thing would be to speak to your software asset management folks and to go ahead and take out the dusty eula which has been collecting dust since years just have a look at it go and speak to your software provider and uh, the thing is that it starts from it start from callousness then goes to willful misavoidance then goes to civil liabilities which is like a tort and after a time the civil liability graduates to criminal liability and there you are and from graduating to commercial damages to criminal liability is the magnitude of the of the of the violation so this is the time most of the companies should should also see their end user license agreements and should should get in touch with um, with at least their software asset management folks to talk to their internal uh, councils and in certain situations if um, to engage with the software manufacturer that see this is the issue and we are bringing it proactively well whether that has to be done or which process has to be followed in which particular fashion which steps comes first and 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 which is not going to be there as depends on the individual strategy which any firm will take like to take but this is a very underreported and underseen thing you guys i am not a contractual nostradamus but this may be a thing which may come towards the end of the year generally when at the end of the year when the contracts are up for renewal and this may come up as as a big surprise to most of the corporations and that's all what i thought uh, to bring it up in case if you if you like my uh, ideas presented in the video do like share and comment and i look forward to your uh, valuable feedback as always